Hello all and welcome to Uncultured Universe, the podcast where two friends, or lovers <laughs> in this case, um, discuss movies, TV, music, books, uh, anything else to get just a little bit more cultured. Uh, I'm your host, Justin, and with me back for the third appearance, uh, making, yeah. rounding out the hat trick, uh, is my partner, Ryan. Hello. <laughs> Not Joe. <laughs> Not Joe. We'll come back to Joe in a second. Um, uh, he will, yeah, we'll get he there in a second. Off. We are, you already told him. I did. I told everybody. Uh, today we're going to be doing an uncultured universe first, uh, a discussion about a book and movie based on the book. Uh, in this case, it's the 2005 book by John Grogan, Marley and Me, as well as the 2008 movie starring Owen Wilson and Jennifer Aniston. Uh, so with that, we're going to dive in and kind of just talk about where we're taking the podcast. Um, you know, you've been here the, the you've been, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> you have. Um, <laughs> So you know that we've been kind of, or at least I have been wanting to kind of talk about more, mm -hmm. um, maybe like m music, music videos, books, um, things TV like series. TV series. Yeah. Just different pieces of culture. Cult culture, media, things like that, that you can experience. Um, main thing being around the like, oh, you haven't heard of this. Or, you know, you need to see this because this is my favorite thing ever. Um, yeah, filling in little holes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, which has been fun. So, uh, for a while, you know, we've been talking about TV or music. But one that kind of snuck up in the past, I don't know, a couple months was books. Uh, how we could do books. Um, one of the first ideas that we came across was doing uh, The Devil Wears Prada. Mm -hmm. Because you read that book. I found it at the thrift store. Yeah. And I was like, oh, we just watched this movie. And I had never seen it before we all watched it for the podcast. That yeah. was a Joe pick. That was. So we had never seen it. So I was like, oh, I found this book at the thrift store for a dollar. How bad could it be? And it was actually pretty good, but it's quite different. Yeah. Which is what happens with books versus movies, especially, you know, you read them and then you're like, um, actually, that's not the color she was wearing. Mm -hmm. or, um, actually, that's not what happened in that order. Yeah, or uh, what was it? One of the things is that like the cerulean monologue is not in the well, that's book. That's not even a thing. Yeah, no. which you know something so iconic about a movie, um, or that you know from a property that most people don't even know is a book, mm -hmm. right? Um, so we kind of took that concept and then kind of ran with it, and we landed on. Uh, we kind of talked about this for a second, I think, during one of Joe's other gallivants. <laughs> Of uh, like, oh, you know what we could do? Is, he's a flight risk. He's pl prone to escape. <laughs> he does get the miles. <laughs> um, we talked about like, well, what if, you know, what a, what a you episode would look like? Yeah. Right. Um, and, and there isn't much. There's that... not a lot that I've seen that you have not seen. Mm -hmm. So that would be a hard uh, direction to go in. Yeah. Um. But there's a lot of books you haven't read. It's true. And um, so, like, I'm, I, I think we could officially dub this, you know, the Uncultured Universe Book Club Episode 1. <laughs> um, which is fun, because this is kind of an, an amalgam, since we're talking about both a book and a movie. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk about the comparisons between the two later. Um, but, you know, since first and foremost we started as a movie podcast, might as well do the movie. Um, one that probably more people are familiar with, familiar with than the book. Um, so let's uh, start there, and we'll talk about the book by John Grogan, Grogan. Mm -hmm. real person, a real dude. It is uh, biographical in nature. Yes, this is about his dog and his young family and growing together, and the thirteen years that they had Marley, mm -hmm. and all of the craziness that ensued. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I probably, like most people, had no idea that this was a book. I was familiar with the movie property of it all. And um, even then, when it came out, I was like, I don't think I want to see that. Uh, dog <laughs> well, movie, no thank you. Well, and dog movies were having a big moment. There was like all these different movies about um, 
the life of dog or whatever that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. They're all tragic. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, then um, we'll, we'll kind of get around to the 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 central theme nerve of it all. Actually, you know what? Fuck that. Let's let's go ahead and dive straight in before we talk about the book. Before we talk about the movie and the comparisons, let's just kind of talk about our own kind of familiarity and growing up with dogs and having our own dogs okay. together. Um, so I'll let I'll let you start. Just like pets in general. Uh, did you have pets growing up? How many do you have? Yeah, did you my have? Parents yeah. had a dog before I was born. His name was Cheyenne. Uh, they got him. I don't know. I guess probably right around the time they got married. I want to say he was. He was. A handful of years old before I was born, mm -hmm. but he was a big part of my life. Like there's pictures of him under my swing, mm -hmm. like just being my best friend. Uh, and he lived for a long, I think he was 17 or 18 when Holy he shit. died. Wow. He was a old, old dog. And I don't remember how old I was, but I was nine or 10. I want to say, wow. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe older. Mm -hmm. I truly don't remember. He was always there until he wasn't. Uh, and then we had, we always had cats. My mom lives in a farmhouse. It's the house I grew up in. And there were always just a million cats around. Yeah. Some of them on purpose. Some of them <laughs> would just show up. People would put them out. Yeah, that's the nature of a farmhouse, right? You get cats. So we always had a bunch of cats. And then when I first moved out on my own, I took... Well, I didn't... I think I lived by myself for like a couple of weeks. And I was like, this is quiet and weird. <laughs> uh, so I uh, took two litter mates, Lucy and Ethel, kitties to live with me and then a year later i took another one of the cats from the same mom so they were all siblings her name was phoebe uh they lived with me until for like five or six years and then they went to go live back with my mom uh and in that time i also got penelope ah uh, the great penelope our little dog yep. in she was born in 2007 and she was i got her when she was eight weeks old um, my best friend at the time uh, knew somebody whose dog had puppies, mm -hmm. and so she was a Christmas present. Yeah, and then uh, we had her until last year. Yeah, and then Womp. I've had a bunch of dogs, and then uh, there's also Lebowski. Lebowski. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Connection to last episode. <laughs> yeah, named after the Jeff, the famous Jeff Bridges character, and then there's Mister Womp. Osborne Darth, who's here on the floor. He's the last man standing. He's present. Yeah, he is here. Um, yeah, we'll we'll get to the the man of the hour here down there uh, in a second. Um, yeah, I kind of had a s semi sort of uh, like always remember some sort of pet around. Um, I remember having two cats when I was like I don't know maybe six, five or six. Um, Zippy and Skippy. Uh -huh. <laughs> I named them. Um, oh, I had cats named all kind of foolish nonsense. I had a cat named Collar because it wore a collar. Makes sense. <laughs> my my favorite cat growing up, his name was Fozzie after mm -hmm. the Muppet, mm -hmm. of course. Of course. He was black and uh, he ran away, allegedly. I found out later, much, much later, that any time I was told an animal ran away, it met a very tragic end and I was usually in the vicinity. Like a lot of them got backed over. Oh yeah. While I was in the car. Ooh. But I didn't find that out till much later. Uh, I imagine that's more scarring in different ways. Still scarring. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there was a correct answer. No, there's not. Um I remember so Zippy, I remember um uh got hit by a car. Um and I remember my parents telling me that. Like that's that's one of that's not my earliest memory because I was like six, um, six or seven, but um, but I still remember that. And when we moved to Texas, we took Skippy with us, and we drove from Georgia to Texas, and we stopped halfway through in like Houston, I think, to stop uh, at one of my aunt's house, uh, aunt's house, Ziz? Ziz? Yeah. <laughs> At my aunt's house, we stopped, uh, <laughs> like partway there, um, and my parents had the idea of because the uh, Skippy, no, not Skippy, Zippy, no, yes, Skippy, who we took with us, she was gray, she was gray, um, she had kittens, 
and we took one with us. And when we, they were both in the same cat crate uh, across half the country. So when we got to Houston, there we were like, they really need to stretch their legs. We're going to let them out, and then um, just so they can, you know, do stuff or whatever. The next morning, they didn't come back. Um, so already, I hated Texas. The, the idea of moving, and now I really hated it. So wait, these cats were in a car for 12 hours. Yeah. And your parents were just like, we'll let them outside and then fuck off? Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. What did they expect to happen? I don't know exactly what happened afterwards of like, well, let them out. You know, like, let them stretch your legs and then they'll come back. That's what they I remember. know where they are. Exactly. What? So, oh. um, so I hated that. <laughs> okay. uh, and then I had... <laughs> I had two dogs over the course of living in Texas. Um, one of them also got hit by a car, and then another one got uh, dog napped, taken straight from our backyard. Oh no! Um, or at least that's what they told me. Wow, well, yeah, it could be another one of them. It could be a Fozzy situation. Yeah, They're but like, I mean, all of your animals have met a tragic end, and we're tired of telling you about it. Someone stole him. At that point, <laughs> they were they were just like. You know, we already told him, like, a lot of his pets have gotten hit. You know, like, let's mix it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. This one got tooken. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I can't remember uh, the first one's name. He was a little black uh, yippy dog. Can't well, remember. We had other dogs, I'm just recalling. Yeah, mm. there were other dogs. Not as yeah. important as Cheyenne. Yeah. Yeah, the one that's, that you remember. Yeah. Um, I can't remember his name, the first one that got hit. But the second one that got that got took in uh was uh tanner and he was like a cocker spaniel mix or something like that anyway tragic all the way around so i was happy to move back to tech uh move back to georgia after living there uh and then uh, then we had cats when we got back we had sherbert and a couple other ones abby uh oh yeah abby yep abby was um phoebe's, phoebe's that's right mm-hmm. that's right we dated in high school you guys uh, in case you forgot. We go way back. <laughs> in case you forgot. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, the uh, the that was high school. And then so in 2007, early 2007, I got Chloe in college. She was born like eight weeks. So like same kind of story with, uh, well, with Penny. She was older than Penny. So she was born in 2006. Okay. Yeah, but I got her in January of T- okay, uh, 2007 Penny was born in november of 2007 right so that makes sense yeah so um yeah so i had her at eight weeks and then all the way up through 16 years later kind of a thing um but yeah so that's like you know general connection to pets and then you know uh got muffins along the way same kind of thing of like knew someone who was having puppies and got one uh that was going to be a present for my sister at the time, but she was 13, and she's like, I can't take care of a dog. But I will give him a very silly name. Very silly name, Muffins. Um, so then uh, I took him in, and him and Chloe were like best friends. And then <laughs> Much to, much to Chloe's chagrin. Absolutely. <laughs> so she was only a couple years older than he was. Uh, and then we had him for 14, 15 years. He was about 14, I think. I think he was when he passed. 14. Um, but yeah, so pets, man. Pets. Uh, but then all that to say, to, to, to spare the, the gruesome details, you know, like we lost three elderly dogs inside of, inside of a year, yeah. inside of a year, but they were all 16, 15 years old. Yeah, Chloe was 16. Penny was 15. Muffins was the youngest. I think he was 13. He was not quite 14. Oh yeah. I think he was born in 2009. Either way. Yeah. Still old dogs. Yes. Uh, all inside of a year. Very hard. Uh, so all the more reason for me to not really want to read this book or watch this movie, that kind of thing. Whenever a, com- a conversation came up about it. I've read this book seven million times, and I've told him over and over, it is not tragic in a way that, you know, your dog getting took in or hit by a car or the dog is loved <laughs> and lives a very full life. Yeah. And you just kind of follow along on his misadventures, and it's endearing and it's lovely. Yes, absolutely. And I came around to it. Uh, you You wore me down. I was like, fine, I'm going to read this book. Um, and I'm glad I did. Um, so yeah, so we'll we'll pivot back over there and talk about the book. So um, yeah, I'll turn it over to you. What do you, what do you, what do you got about the book? I've got a lot 
about the book. Uh, it takes place over the course of 13 years from 1991 to 2003. Uh, it's a freshly married couple who've been dating for a while, but they just are settling down. They buy a house. Um, and the wife, the main character, Jenny, is upset because she can't keep plants alive. And she's like, if I can't keep a fucking plant alive, what am I going to do with the baby? And all of a sudden, John comes home one day and she's circling ads in the newspaper for dogs and he's like oh oh so this is what we're doing yeah well we'll go look at one and then they get a dog yeah. and that you know we follow him along until the end of 2003 when marley passes um the book is published in 2005 he wrote it from like his journals and stuff yeah uh he in the book he talks about how he after he he's a journalist and he's written all kinds of columns about Marley's misadventures. And so his readers know of him and of some of his silliness. And then after Marley dies, he writes like a tribute column about him and gets like an overwhelming response Yeah, and then decides to write a book. Is that, that was the bad dogs club or something like that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Um, so you, you have read this an insane amount of times. I don't know where I got it or why I have it or if I bought it or if someone gifted it to me. It just appeared one day <laughs> in my life. <laughs> yeah. And became- particularly if like a book appears in, in front of you, like you be weary of it. But like this is a harmless book. Right? Mostly. I yeah. mean, I do sob every time I this read it. This isn't like a monkey's paw kind of a thing, like where you wished for something and you no, give or get it. I don't know. <laughs> it just appeared one day. Uh, it's. It's well worn. It's well worn and loved. My paperback book. I've read it. I've read it on long car trips. I've read it on planes. I've read it so many times. Just because it's, I know the story. And like, if I'm not paying it, like, if you're just zoning out and reading words on the page, you don't have to go back and be like, what happened? What happened? What happened? Because I, I know what happened. Yeah. You know? So it's just an easy thing to go back to. It's a comfort yeah. read. It's a comfort thing. That makes sense. Um, I remember one of the first few times that we went to Orlando when we were dating, um, you brought the book along because it was, you know, it's, it's, it's like a couple hour flight down. It's a little more than an hour each direction. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had like, I don't know, I had like Dune or something or Harry Potter or something in my, in my yeah, backpack. Yeah, when you were reading Harry Potter. Yeah. And but. you had that and you're like, oh, this is. Like looking at it and you have it and like, it, it's kind of hard to tell, but like the but spine it, is broken. The edges are frayed. It, it is a well-loved book. As beat up as books can look, but based on the, the reverence that I treat books with, like this is pretty worn out. Yeah. It's been, you know, shoved in the sides of cars and in backpacks and stuff like yeah. that. So it makes sense. Flopped around in luggage. Yeah. So I, you know, you're like, oh, this is like my comfort thing. And I was like, ugh. <laughs> Because, like, I don't, I didn't know anything about the story, but I can infer that, I like. I feel like you're, you're, you treated it like old Yeller. Sure, it's yeah. very much not old Yeller. <laughs> I knew he wasn't going to get, like, rabies and, you know, the main character is going to have to, like, shoot him or anything like that. But it's just like. Did you, did you know that? <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Maybe I was kind of extrapolating it a little bit. But, like, the, the, the tragedy of heartbreak of facing a pet uh uh meeting their end you know be it untimely or timely is uh is is not something that i like live not for, for not for funsies yeah. and so like one thing that that gets me is like the the cover of the dvd that we got uh for this movie says it's like the great family breakout hit of this of the w summer or something like that it's it was, so ridiculous it was a christmas movie oh, right. horrible <laughs> what a terrible way to spend christmas day um but yeah so like i'd always kind of avoided like sappy movies like that dog centric i, I think part of that is like deep-seated you know, emotional damage from a child from watching like Fox and the Hound and watching this isn't that. All Dogs Go to Heaven, right. yeah. that kind of thing. Oh, um, your main experience with dogs is having them meet tragic ends. Yeah, which I'm just not putting together, which makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. Um, but so like I fought, not didn't fight tooth and nail, but you just 
I was reluctant. You're like, I have other things. I'll read anything else. Yeah. And I was like, great. I can't wait to read the dog murder book. Yay. Um, just kind of just fucking with you. But mm-hmm. uh, ultimately, I was glad I read it. Um, so, I mean, it sold 8 million copies. That's a bunch. Yeah. It's a it's an international number one bestseller. It's been published in more than 30 languages. That's a bunch. Yeah. People love this book. It's a good story, I will say. Um, because it's real. Yeah. Yeah, right. And and uh com- and this is like just the only kind of like footnote I'm gonna make before we jump to the book and the comparisons later. But like compared to the movie, the book story is, you know, miles ahead. Yeah, it's so, it. it's, it's so much better. It's so much better. So much better. So like we'll we'll come back to it. Um, we have feelings. We have so many feelings about that goddamn movie. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a good book, even though I gave you a hard time about it. And, uh, you know, like when I finished it, I sobbed so hard in bed. <laughs> we were reading in bed and he rolled over and he goes, I hated it. And he yeah, just went and blew his nose in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. It's like the book was mean to me. And um, like it just, I don't know, it hurts. And I don't, I'm not... I wasn't ready for it. Like, I was ready because I expected it, but I wasn't. No, I've I, read this so many times, I cry every single time. You yeah, can't I, not. One of the reviews on this book says, it would take a heart of stone to resist Marley and me. True. Who said that? Uh, the New York Times said that. The guy, His friend from the New York Times? Probably. That guy doesn't exist. <laughs> he doesn't. Oh, God, I can't wait to rip that movie to shreds. Um... <laughs> So, like, um, yeah, I remember, like, when you were, we were going on this trip to Orlando, and you showed that to me, and I was like, okay, like, I get it, it's a comfort thing, and you made a a very good case, for not that you needed to make a case for it, but I was like, cool, that totally makes sense, like, I'm going to read Harry Potter, because I need to, and want to, like, finish it, and all that. Um, I could pick it up and put it down, if I don't finish it, it's whatever. Yeah. Pick it up six months later and either start it over or read it again. Like, it doesn't matter. And then that was also like the first time that I got a glimpse of like your active, real speed reading kind of uh, uh, capabilities. I mean, it's it's like, it's what, 100 and 300, 300 pages long? Like, just shy of 300 pages, I think. It's 289 in yeah. this, this version. Yeah. But I read it halfway on the way down and halfway on the back way back up yeah so i remember like on the on the flight back like as soon as we touch down into hartsville jackson in atlanta <laughs> yeah i look over and i'm just like oh she's finished with the book there's like silent tears rolling down my face because i'm in a plane full of people <laughs> yeah but like i couldn't imagine reading that in a public setting with a bunch of weirdos on an airplane breathing recycled air but um but yeah like you've read it you know at, at least two or three times in recent past yeah. and then this most recent time. But um, yeah, I love that it is like, it's a well-worn, well-loved book. Um, yeah. It's, it's a, it's a, it's an heirloom now at this point <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of a thing. Um, yeah. Uh, any, any more bits around the book before we jump to the movie? Um, no, I love the book. I am angry about the movie. Those were all my little tidbits about the book mm-hmm. the timeline and the, the, I think the 8 million copies is current. Mm-hmm. I think that's since its release in 2005. 2005, yeah. Yeah. Uh, has he done any other? There is another book that he wrote that I think talks about his life. It's like more of a memoir. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't, I'm not interested. Thanks anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like you did good with this one and uh, <laughs> I don't want to look at it anymore. But he's primarily a journalist and a, a, you know, newspaper guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, which I mean, I I, I think it's a. He was born in the '60s, so he's he's old. He's not young. <laughs> <laughs> he's old now. Um, yeah, I uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, as much as I <laughs> as much as you really as really much as I really hated, hated it. resisted <laughs> as much as I resisted, and as much as I, you know, uh, as much as it hurt me, <laughs> this goddamn book. But um, no, it was good, and then. You know, I grew to appreciate it even more over the past two days when we watched this motherfucking movie. Let's talk about so 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 bad. All right, let's talk about this stupid movie. All right, the movie. Okay, first let's talk about some facts about the movie, which will mislead you 
heavily. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this movie was released on Christmas Day of 2008 under the tagline, This Christmas, Heal the Love. Okay, so, all right, pause. Pause. (laughs) Pause. Uh Heal means uh, the actual dog command, right? Means to... Means to like stay on the heel, I right? Think so yeah, something like that, or like pay attention. Uh-huh. Okay. I think they're just trying to make it a, a pun about. It's a bad a pun. Can't heal. <laughs> it's a bad pun. Yeah. It okay. at the time was the largest Christmas Day box office ever. At I, fourteen and three quarter million dollars. Uh, it was a sixty million dollar budget, and it took in two hundred and forty seven point eight million dollars at the box office. Like, this thing did numbers. <laughs> it's not, like, <laughs> it's so impressive. Um, for, for such a bad movie. It gets a 7 out of 10 on IMDb. And disagree. And it's 75% on Rotten Tomatoes. Hard disagree. <laughs> and it won a 2019 Choice Award. Can you guess the, the category? Teen Choice Award? Uh, was it like best kiss and it's like a, a, the dope, one of the dog kisses? No, it was romantic comedy. No, right? no, it's so bad. It's so bad. Teen Choice Awards, get out of here. There was, it was nominated for some other things, and I think Jennifer Aniston won something, but yeah. Oh, man. like So, on paper, this looks like it's going to be a great movie. And then I read some things where they, um, they talked to John Grogan about it, and they interviewed him after the movie had been released or something, maybe, and he was like, yeah, they had to change a couple things. But I would say it's 80% true to real life. Did he watch the movie? Right? He's he's a he's a words guy. He's not a math guy. He doesn't know percents. I guess I don't. Doesn't know percentages. Uh, maybe by that point, his vision's going. He's not <laughs> that old. Yeah, especially when this movie came out three years after the book. Right. So, which is a fast turnaround. Yes. Um, but even still, st- like, that's... I was prepared to really enjoy this movie based on what I had read and everything I'd seen. I was still prepared to fully hate this movie, For just the because same reasons. The same reason of the book. Okay. Um, but that it, it was this weird journey metamorphosis that it took on, um, of like, like, oh, this is bad. Oh, this is, that was a terrible choice. Um, so in the first three seconds I was mad. Oh yeah. Kind of like showing them. Because the first, like the opening scene is of a boy and a dog. And like it says, when you're a kid, you grow up and you have the best dog and you think all dogs are going to be this great. And then it's like, well, that wasn't me. That's not even me. And that's not my dog. Which in the in the book, the whole reason that John and Jenny want to get a dog is because they had such beloved dogs growing up. Yeah, they, they both they had them by name and they talk about them. So the fact that it opened up on like, I don't know why I got a dog. Yeah, such weird <laughs> choices that they diverted from. And I was waiting for like the... uh that 80% that you mentioned yeah. before we watched the movie of like, okay, they're done kind of fucking with the story just like, because maybe they just didn't want to hire another dog actor and it was just too, too complicated. So they're just going to start fresh with like, we got a dog. They vilify Marley in this movie so hard. It's not fair. Like yeah. talk about how life in love with the world's worst dog. It's, it's tongue in cheek, but in the movie, this dog is bad. Yeah. He's so bad. But a lot of that is due to their like negligence, yeah. being terrible pet parents, being just like really, uh, uh, you know, not present, not mindful at all. Like it is just. It's so different bad. than the book where they talk about all the different times they spent trying to wear him out and taking him on walks and mm-hmm. getting him training and all. Just there's so much time and love invested in this dog. That is not apparent in the movie at all. Yeah. And it also, is, I hate Jennifer Aniston in this movie. The, I hate her in this role. The chemistry between the no, two is non existent. There is yeah. no chemistry. She fe- just feels icky and fake. Like she gives me the ick in this movie. And she's more, uh, she's equally like barely present in the, um, in the book version. Like Jenny's character is still like in the background because yeah. it's more about like, John and his journey and all that kind of stuff. And um, Marley is still more present Mm -hmm. there than in the movie. In the movie, it's more about like John's career. 
Which, which is, is falsified. Not Nothing so that falsified. happens in the movie happened in the book to his career. Yeah, most I was like, when does he go? Yeah, most of the milestones are the reasons that like they move or do this or that or the other thing. They just make up different reasons in the movie than just to skip and jump to it. Yeah, but the, like for what reason? There was no reason. It, n- and not- then there's this whole douchebag guy that they invented for the movie that they made his best friend. He doesn't exist. Sebastian. Who the fuck is that guy? Yeah, and and to me that seems so. The the Sebastian character, the mixed steamy guy. Um, from Grey's Anatomy, and Alan Arda's character, or Alan Arkin, Alan Arda. Oh, is he the the boss the, guy? Yeah. I mean, we don't really meet that guy in the book either. So that seems to me of like, um, a uh, uh, corporate or uh, movie execs being like. I can feel like that being slotted into the movie to help give it a more physical way to drive it along. Like my boss is making me do this and my best friend is this and that. I can kind of understand them inserting that in, but there were so many things they changed that they truly did not need to. It was very, very bad. So bad. And like there were, there were so many things that were like out of place and things that were missing completely. Or they take three or four events and swish them all together and make them one thing. Yeah. And, um, there was there was no like weight or reverence, like you said, to any of these significant mile markers or milestones along, um, you know, like Marley's journey and his life. Even John's journey, like one of the things that happens to them early on is uh, Jenny becomes pregnant and loses the baby. Yeah. And they spend a decent chunk of time talking about that. And I feel like it does a good job of exploring that. In a way that an actual human person experienced it. Yeah. And they fully cut it out of the movie. I mean, it was there. Yeah. That part was there. But very. it was very quick, breezed over. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, yeah, a lot of weird timing, pacing issues. I mean, and that's the, that's the thing with like a typical kind of like family movie, family comedy, that kind of thing. It's, it's usually it's a tight... 90 minutes or something like that. So there's stuff that needs to be cut, but I didn't think it there, there were some things so long too. It was long over the, it took us two nights to to watch it. Um, but it was like an hour 45, I think, uh, for 2005, that's a long movie. Yeah. Right. And to expect that many people to go out on Christmas day, which they did, they showed up and have their Christmas ruined and (laughs) and have their fucking Christmas ruined. Such a, I don't think I would have cried at this movie. Yeah. If I did not have my own personal experiences with that veterinary office. 100%. Yeah. And that I, was There was no there was no it wasn't sad. Yeah. Like they I think they meant to build it up to this whole point of like, you know, we've lived with this dog and now he's he's getting old and we have to make this decision. Nobody even likes this dog. Yeah. And like the time jumps didn't feel like grounded. Um, it, it was it was really bad. Like interesting, weird scene changes and stuff that uh, had no weight to them. Of like five years has gone by at this mm-hmm. point, or you know three years or something like that. It was just on to the next scene and like hope you read the book because now you know like this part's coming or something like this is coming. And it was just really weird, weirdly paced. There was that weird sequence in the beginning or towards the beginning, like after they get Marley. And remember, it was just like a bunch of quick cuts and oh, stuff like that. Uh, uh, and it was it was really bad. And it didn't make a lot of sense. No. And I did not enjoy that part either. But um, <laughs> an interesting thing that like watching this, I was like, God, this has to have been like from a amateur fucking director like this first time out the gate because it feels so disjointed and so bad turns out it was directed by david frankel who also directed the devil wears prada oh (laughs) right (laughs) the very first episode of this of this podcast so like which is a movie that we all enjoyed we all loved yeah right and And, you know the movie is different from that book i can tell you but not in a way that would make you angry (laughs) <laughs> yeah i mean like sure they're missing the cerulean monologue whatever but there's still some interesting things that happen well, i can see why they would fill that in for the movie to give it like this epic i get it i get why mm-hmm. that's not in the book and it's in the movie this yeah it is would be the opposite problem yeah it would be a different thing if like the performances were better if the chemistry between you know owen wilson and jennifer aniston were w- palpable yeah 
was, they did make Owen Wilson say wow like five well, times. Yes, God, it was so bad. The first time he said wow, it was just like, <laughs> holy shit, this is going to be that kind of movie. Um, but no, it was, it's just bad. And like, we never shat on a movie this hard <laughs> <No>. <laughs> ever. Like, like Joe maybe had like not a great time with one other movie that we've done, but like, I can't remember which one, but like a lot of the time he was like, you're not going to like this, but I don't remember what movie that is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, this one was just, I cannot believe the number of five stars and yeah. great reviews that this movie yeah. gets. It is mind blowing because it's like, did we watch? Don't the- know the story. They don't know, yeah, how much you actually grow to love this dog. Yeah, and we've kind of and not like, oh, this dog's around, and oh, I guess it's over because the dog's gone. Yeah, we we are, we're kind of bleeding over into like the the comparison part of it, which is natural. It's fine. Um, which is good that we started with talking about the book first, but like, the the end, I felt was so abrupt and was weird so rushed so fucking rushed it was just like well he's old now and he's dead and we got to bury him and they did that scene um roll credits roll credits yep. like he gets like a like a two-line thing of just like can you wow can you imagine uh you know somebody loving you as much as like this like, as a dog can and then like done yeah uh, like the whole after marley dies in the book there's like a chapter and a half of so of much. other I mean, good stuff afterwards yeah. of them living with it living with that and then and then the thing happening of him writing about marley in the paper mm-hmm. and stuff like that and then the the public support and all that and then giving him the idea to write a book and all that and then they get another dog well, at and the end in the movie jenny's like you should write a book that's not what happened girl like get with it like why 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 would you change that I was waiting for just a point to for, and it's also not a thing where like she's a successful writer and he's kind of an idiot. Like that's not, that's not, that's not what goes at all. That was fully unnecessary. It was a weird choice, like, especially when you have power like, players. As the author of the book and the members of the family that this book is based upon, that would have hurt my feelings so bad. All the different choices they made in this movie, yeah, would have been so offensive to me as a person who lived it and. Yeah, felt it. And- still around. And like these kids that grew up with this dog and they're like, that's not, that's not how Marley was. What is this movie? Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a weird choice that they did. And I don't understand why, like when you have two big power players like Owen Wilson and Jennifer Aniston, you would play them up more. Um, but they, they weren't. Uh, I, I don't think Owen Wilson was particularly funny at any point in this movie. Uh, his typical kind of Owen Wilson charm was starting to fade at this point. His post, uh, you know, um, Wedding Crashers days and all that kind of stuff is just kind of waning. So, like, I don't know. I think it was a big miss. And, yeah, I, I totally, too, I was offended by the movie because, the by comparison, the book was so much better. Yeah. And um, it is offensive that they did that. I, too, have some fun facts about the movie. Okay. What do you got? Um, did you know that there was a direct to DVD prequel released? Yes, and it did real bad. Good because <laughs> um, it was direct to pre- the DVD. The dog talks. Right, bad choice. I think that was kind of in the Airbud years, where like there were a hundred golden retrievers. No, 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 no. The like Airbud was like in the nineties. Was he? Yeah, I thought he was early aughts. No, that was like in the mid nineties, oh. like Casper and all that kind of stuff. It was that era. Maybe they were trying to recapture the magic. I guess, but, but by this point, that was like 2000. This, that movie was released in 2011. Yeah. And it gets a 3.4 on IMDb and a 42% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I feel like is, is more, much more appropriate. It's much more appropriate to this movie. Yeah. Somebody must have they been crossing the wires. Yeah. Something's wrong there. What else you got? Uh, 22 different yellow labs were used throughout oh, filming. That's cool. 22. And I feel like they could have paid more attention to that, too. Because, like, some through some of the, the scene changes where you're like, that's a completely different dog. Like, you know that it is because it's yeah, just movie magic. Age him up, but like in the beginning, the dog is cast pretty well because Marley's supposed to be like an atypical giant lab. Yeah. Uh, and he, the dog that they cast for young Marley is like big and gangly and has long legs. Mm-hmm. And then as they go on, they get to older dogs that are just, that's a yellow lab. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, and you're just like that dog. That's that's not an eight week old puppy. 
that dog is three months old, you know? Yeah, I mean, they do the same thing with babies in movies. That's kind of like a... And that's a thing that, like, as parents, we can recognize, too, of, uh, I think when they had... That woman birthed a toddler. Yeah, that, that's no goddamn baby I've ever seen. <laughs> Which I know you can't actually have, like, real new- newborns on set. Well, I mean, same thing for puppies, I'm sure. Yeah, I guess. But, like, uh, one of the, the elder dogs... Uh, in the later scenes, like the snout is like way longer, and she's like, "It doesn't even look like the same dog." It's a yellow lab. Play along. Yeah, we got twenty-two of these guys. Like, what do you want? They're hard to direct. I don't know. Uh, and then I found it interesting that they did actually shoot on location uh, uh, that are that's accurate to the to the book to the story, like West Palm Beach, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, uh, as well as Philadelphia and Westchester, uh, and then Ireland. They were actually there in Ireland, which is pretty cool. Um, it's interesting that they went all the way to Ireland to film a bedroom scene. Weird, right? They didn't even go outside. Hardly. There's a couple they like outside shots. There's a couple, couple outside <laughs> shots, pickup shots that have just like, yeah, you guys are getting on a flight for to for two days shot uh, to shooting out there in Ireland. Um, very okay. ridiculous. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I feel like we've shat on this movie so hard. Good, deservedly so. Terrible. Um, all right. Do not watch the movie. Please read the book. It's delightful. The movie you can was take nothing else away. Yeah, the movie was so much better, or the book was so much better than the movie. God. Well, apparently, at many of the book releases, like the signings and stuff, they also gave you tissues. Makes sense. <laughs> That's smart and mean, but it's smart. Not, it's a good book. <laughs> it is a good book, but like not old yeller. It's not the same thing. It well, you touched on it. Like what makes it hard, and I knew that this was going to be the case going into it. And the reason why I, w- I was also not psyched about watching the movie too is just like we've lived that, we've done that very recently, a bunch of times. Yeah, a lot. And um, and like that part's accurate. Like, but it was just like, God, oh, Jesus. Like, I don't want to like have to relive that again. Um, and it doesn't matter because the first several times I read this, I hadn't been through that. Yeah, but it's still sad it's to read because objectively. You, you love this dog yeah. as much as the author loves this dog. Mm-hmm. Not but so like, in the movie. In the movie, you're like, oh, well, I guess it's almost over. Yeah, yeah, right? But like understanding of just like, oh, shit, I know exactly what this feels like, what that feels like to see the deteriorating health and all that kind of stuff. And when you're reading it, you can read his, more obviously, more of his emotions and how he's feeling about it. So, like, to, to be, like, transported back into that spot was just like, this is the worst thing ever. I knew this was going to happen. Damn it. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, um, so I had an idea. Okay. We've already kind of danced around a lot of the plot. Um, but I think what we should do is we should do the plot to probably the book more than the movie. Because we both had a bad time with the movie. Largely the same Largely big steps. The same, but just don't watch the movie because it's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Don't do it. Uh, it's not well, but do it so you can watch the this episode and enjoy it with us. Just read the book. Just read the book. Do that. It's and a just quick. Understand that you don't want to watch the movie <laughs> unless you really love being Hating let down. Movies. Unless you really love being let down um, by a terrible movie. Uh, so let's both do the plot. What? So we normally do plots in in a minute. Yes. But I'm going to do a minute and a half. Okay. And let's go like idea after idea. Like you do a line and I'll do a line. Okay. Maybe I'll do it two minutes. Well. Okay. I'll do two minutes and I have a timer set. So it's like a sentence, but we're going to tell the same story. Oh, we're playing an improv game. Yeah. My favorite. We're both telling the same story. It's no big deal. We both know it. We both read the book. You've read it a thousand times. Yep. Okay. Uh, so we're both going to tell the plot. Okay. Uh, in ping pong fashion. All right. You go, you go first. You go first? I guess. I want to see what you mean. Okay. Uh, we'll much, figure it out. How much time goes by in your sentence? That's what I'd like to see. Okay. All right. Uh, on your mark, it's at two minutes. Go. Sure. Marley and Me starts with John Grogan and his young wife uh, getting uh, married. Uh-huh. And then they buy a house um, in... Florida. They've bounced around a bunch because she went to school here and he went to school yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But they finally settled down in Florida with their house. Yes, and they're both writers. Mm-hmm. And then For uh, competing newspapers. Competing newspapers, which is a neat point. Um, so then, yeah, like you said, uh, she's circling the newspaper because she's like, "I can't take care of uh, plants. Uh, we need to t- we need to get a dog." 
Uh, so they go to a bre- it's a backyard breeder. This woman has two dogs, and this is the dog's second litter, and then she's going to have the mom fixed, and they pick out a dog. Yep, and turns out this dog is Marley, and he's kind of uh, uh, like the ding-dong of the litter. Uh, but they don't know it yet. They take him home. He starts growing really, really fast, and things get out of control. And um, He kind of destroys the house because he's scared of storms, and he has separation anxiety, mm-hmm. which is a dog thing that happens. Yep, so then they try to like do training, but then they k- get kicked out. Uh, but then they still work with him and try to get him tired and run and all that kind of stuff. And then they start having babies. Yep, and then they have a whole bunch of babies. Uh, and then, uh, his career kind of starts taking off in different directions. They move to Boca. It's different jobs that take him to different places. They move to Boca. They move up North to Pennsylvania because he starts a job with a a magazine, a horticulture magazine, which they don't even fucking talk about. Which makes sense because he had a green thumb and he loved to plant and that's then the mangoes and stuff like that, which was a great, was a great touch. He works there. Uh, Marley's starting to get a little bit older, uh, a little bit slower after John turns 40 and then he leaves that job. Uh, because he needs to go back to a newspaper. Mm-hmm. The, the um, the magazine's doing a lot better than it was when he got there, so he goes back to a newspaper. And then Marley has a health scare. Yep. And then uh, it was like one in a million, he makes it, and but then it happens again. It's and very he, sad. It's very sad. He doesn't make it, and then they... Get another puppy. Well, okay. <laughs> the, the done. <laughs> <laughs> they don't actually get that puppy. Oh, that's right. They're looking at it. They're and, looking at the puppy. And they're like, what could happen? Well, uh, wow. in the afterward, there's like an interview with uh-huh. the author. And it turns out that when they went back to see the puppy with the kids, the shelter was like, we can't let you have this dog with young children because he has a tragic past and he's very unpredictable. Mm. So Lucky, the dog that they think about getting, doesn't wind up being their dog. They get another dog later on named Gracie. Interesting. Okay. Uh, cats. I didn't read that. The, I didn't read the afterward because the book had done too much to me at that <laughs> point. <laughs> I had to, I wanted to put it in the freezer. Okay. Joey. Yeah, I did. Um, so, uh, cheers to you. Well done. That was great. <laughs> I'm, I'm bad at timed plot thingies because I get hung up on minute details. Joe too. Not Joe as does- bad as me. Remember when I did the last one and I got hung up on that fucking rocket for like half of my minute? Oh, when we did Interstellar? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. You said... <laughs> then when Joe listened back, he's like, is she still talking about the rocket? <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, that's right. You said, this is your retaliation for making me watch, yes, making you I watch Interstellar. so many times during that movie. That movie was mean as hell. Yeah. <laughs> for what? Yeah. And I cried a bunch for both of this during the book and the movie. So either way. Uh, so what, what we were just choosing to, this is a fun thing. We tried to rack our brains of like, what the hell are we going to do for a cocktail? I suggested a mind eraser. Yes. To just forget forget. that movie. Make you forget. Um, we're kind of kicking around ideas, maybe something with like mango, Mm -hmm. mango puree or something like that. Cause Marley loved, uh, mango mango. in their first house backyard that they barely even mentioned in the movie. Which it's I'm glad really at least important. It's got a weird check mark of just like Probably because they had to tell a story or they decided to tell a story that actually had a lot to do with the mangoes. And they're like, oh, fuck, we never mentioned the mangoes. Uh, by the way, they were mangoes. Yeah. Marley eats mangoes, period. In, in, next scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A weird choice, man. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, Internet will serve up, you know, when you search for like dog related cocktails, it's like a salty dog or variations on that. So it's a lot of things with grapefruit juice, which we don't have because we're not a hundred. Well, and I don't particularly care for grapefruit juice in a cocktail. Like it always sounds nice, but like mm-hmm. a Paloma, I want it based on its description, but then I get it and I'm like, oh, this is that. Ugh. Yeah. J- uh, grapefruit, pass. No, thanks. So uh, I found something else that was called a, uh, a yellow lab. Um, so which called for apple juice and gin, which sounded delicious. But we didn't have apple juice, but we did have apple cider packets. So we made apple cider uh-huh. and chilled it and added gin to it. So it's a spicy yellow lab. <laughs> yeah, which is fitting. For, for Marley. Because Marley a little w- bit of a was a spicy, boy. unpredictable boy. The goodest boy, though. He's right. So, he was so good. Poor dog. That poor dog in that movie. Yeah, so this is you know just four ounces of that spicy uh, spiced apple cider and then an ounce and a half of uh, some zesty gin that we had that, that we, we made mm-hmm. that we made ourselves yeah because we're those people we're that bitch sometimes we're those bitches sometimes yeah we have our moments but it's good it's delicious um 
you know, I think it would fit right in with Marley's like back, I guess, third of his life, I guess, when they moved up north yeah. or maybe quarter of his life. Yeah, they weren't up north very long before he started to have trouble doing the stairs. And stuff. Yeah, with cold weather and all that kind of stuff. So, um, it seemed like they had like two or three winters. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Only two. Right. Um, yeah, the, um, that's, that's kind of like the long and short of just like this movie and a book. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it anymore. The movie's bad. <laughs> the movie's so bad. But the book was good. Yes. And I highly recommend. And honestly, take nothing else away. Yeah. And, and I imagine a lot of our listeners or just a lot of people in general are pet people. Right. And um, there's a lot to, you know, uh, draw comparisons to that kind of stuff with this book. Um, you know, especially if you're if you're, you know, a little bit older and you've been, you know, married for a little bit or you have young kids and that kind of stuff. There's things in there like, you know, resentment of the dog that you have in your house. Yes. When I you mean, have a having pets and infants is hard and they they kind of touch on it in the movie, but they touch on it more in the book. Yeah. In a more like well-rounded way. Yeah. And this was just like in the movie, it was more like, Oh, she's just, she is. Yes. On edge, pissed off. Um, and what? He's like, it's just your hormones. And I'm surprised she didn't burn the house down because number one, that's not how it happens in the book. Yeah. <laughs> number two, never, never do that. All right. She, to a woman. She did have postpartum, right? Mm -hmm. Was that it? Yeah. And, yeah, he goes about it way differently in the book. You know why? Because his douchebag friend told him to. <laughs> That's right. God, what a bad <laughs> choice. Um, so I do have like a couple gripes of like John Grogan, the character from the book in the early 90s, that kind of stuff. There's some points in there that feel very. There's a couple of uh, wording choices and some different things that he talks about that he would have probably omitted in today's world. Yeah, like, and, and just like reading, it was just like, ugh. Like some of the things of like, uh, uh, they, and they kind of did in the movie too, of like, which I always thought was a weird thing, you know, of like, you know, J uh, like Jenny's pregnancy. Like it's her baby, that kind of thing. And he's like, congratulations. You know, it's like, aren't you guys both having this baby? Um, very weird, that kind of thing. Um, there was a whole thing in the beginning of like, like the machismo kind of thing, like typical gender roles. Oh, where he's like, I need to be the master of this dog. Yeah. Yeah. Very weird. And then there's this other thing at the very end, uh, towards the very end, uh, I think just before Marley has his first surgery, whatever, he goes to like Washington, D.C. And he's like doing a piece there. And there's like this weird, like, three paragraph moment where he's like, and I'm proud to be an American, you know? And like, and that got me thinking about this dog. And it was just like, well, this, this is very recent. Not very recent. This was pretty recently after nine 11. Yeah. And so everybody was doing that. And, and it just felt so out of place, yeah. but I guess you're right. You got to transport back to like still a very fresh post nine 11 world. But like, it was a weird choice to put it in there. It's like, and as I stood there looking at the George Washington monument, no, he's, I think he's at the twin towers. Yeah, Did I he? think he's in DC. I think he's, I think he's at the Twin Towers, but I, I truly don't remember. I got yeah. over and I move on. Yeah, I was just like, oh boy. Um, but yeah, there's some unsavory bits in, in throughout the book, which is, you know, you you look at the time and you know, the early '90s, that kind of thing. But anyway, um, final thoughts here on Marley and Me as a whole. Marley and Me, the book is precious and wonderful, and everyone should read it, whether or not you have pets in your life. I think it's an important read. It's it's you know. I just think it's a good one. It's good for empathy. It's good for mm -hmm. um, just it's a, it's a real person's story. Yeah. About love and loss and not just pet loss, but other loss and growing up and moving on. And like, there's just so many different things that are relatable about it. Yeah, and absolutely. It's in such a an endearing way. Yeah. And, and it's approachable. It's not. um overtly like verbose or uh there's not like an agenda stuck in there there's some you know like i said some uh, unsavory tape unsavory parts in it but that's just a product of the time that it was written uh, but largely is a a good slice of life of real life mm. you know young marriage through young kids through multiple career changes 
all the while you have this thing, this being that is relying on you for for all this stuff and your journey with it. I thought it was great. Um, uh, loathed the movie. <laughs> the movie so much from the very first scene. I was like, "Oh, this is bad." Yeah, and that's <laughs> this and that's, is wrong and bad. That is truly saying something. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and um, we're going to pivot to the end and do the end games. Okay. Um, what have you got? This is this is your first time taking the this swing is my at first this end game. Although I do come up with a lot of the end games you do yeah you are truly the um the muse for a lot of things you do have some great ideas that you seed me we spend a lot of time together so well, yeah we, we yeah we we spend a lot of time together but so um what i'm doing is i'm going to just give a just a quick like one two sentence synopsis of a movie that was inspired by a book okay and i need you to tell me the name of the movie slash book slash book great uh, simple enough. Mm -hmm. Do you have a name for this game? Did you ever come up with one? No. Okay. I was. I've been so mad about this fucking movie for the last three days. Like I almost didn't even do a game, but then I was like, we can't half-ass this episode any more than we already are, <laughs> yeah. and we're only doing the one episode this month because Justin was scared to watch the movie and read the book, so he stalled for three weeks. In my de in my defense, I grew up it with with as as I pointed out with a lot of tragic things. So like, I mean, okay, you know. <laughs> um, but this is a unique thing because we did a whole book, a whole ass book, and a whole ass movie all together. So, like, I'm fine with it. It's not the Odyssey. It was. It's a short book. Still. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. So no, there's no name. I couldn't think of anything clever, clever. Yeah. or catchy. But anyway, okay. So number one. Mm. A recent college grad with big dreams lands a job, finding herself assistant to a diabolical editor. <laughs> That's one we've done before. You're right. That is The Devil Wears Prada. You're right. It's yeah. a book written in 2003, made into a movie in 2006. That's so fast. So fast. So many of these are. Yeah. Okay. Well done. Number two. A select group is chosen to tour an island theme park while the park's billionaire mastermind assures everyone of its safety. I just read this. Jurassic Park. You're right. Written in 1990. Film in 1993. Again. Pretty quick. Which uh, I, I looked that up um, to divert. Uh, the movie studio bought the rights before he finished the book. I think that's what happened with Devil Wears Prada, too. Like so many people fought over it, right? Didn't we talk about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody wanted their hands on it. Interesting. That's wild. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well done. Number three. A boy from a poor family dreams of finding one of five hidden tickets for admission into a magical factory. I think I did know that that was a book. Uh, Willy Wonka, or is it Charlie and the Chocolate it's Factory? It's Charlie and the Chocolate Charlie Factory. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? It's a rolled doll book. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Willy Wonka was the Johnny Depp yes. version. That book was written in 1964, and the original movie with uh, uh, Frankenstein, whatever his name is, Gene Wilder, Gene Wilder yes. was released in 1971. Okay. So, so a little bit longer. Quick, but, yeah. Pretty damn quick for that time. All right. Number four. This titular character has never thought himself disadvantaged, and thanks to his supportive mother, he leads anything but a restricted life. Whether dominating as a college football star, fighting in Vietnam, or captaining a shrimp boat, he inspires people with his childlike optimism. I almost said Rudy, but that's not it. Um, I think I knew this too, but I didn't. I didn't really know. Uh, Forrest Gump. Yeah, that was a book. Mm -hmm. Huh. It was written in 1986, and the movie came out in 1994. Mm. All right. Genius undergrad begins work on a new concept that will turn into a global social network. Six years later, he's one of the youngest billionaires ever, but his unprecedented success leads to personal and legal complications. Was it based on a book? Mm -hmm. Social network was? Yeah. Wow. The book is called The Accidental Billionaires. Oh. Uh... And it was written in 2009, and the movie was released in 2010. Shit. They started, I think, yeah, quick, quick. Concurrent, quick. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well done. All right. You ready? Keep moving? Mm-hmm. When a young woman starts acting odd, her worried mother seeks medical help, only to hit a dead end. A local priest thinks the girl may be seized by the devil and sends in an expert to help with a difficult job. Uh, William Peter Blatty's The Exorcist? That is correct. Yeah. <laughs> the book was written in 1971, and the film 
was in 1973. And I think he wrote both. I think he. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. His name's at the top. Yeah. (laughs) There's a poster right over there. (laughs) Okay. Fine. Uh, She has an uneventful life at her late father's hat shop, but that all changes when she befriends a wizard living in a magical flying castle. I think Joe mentioned that, that it was a book. Oh, that's right. It's what? That's right. Okay. Yeah. Howl's Moving Castle. You're right. That book was written in 1986. Uh-huh. And then the, the movie came out in 2012. That's the biggest gap we had, yes. we've had. I am interested in reading that. It's a series. There's oh, that's right. There's like th- three, three or four books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Last one. Okay. A young girl is given 13 hours to rescue her brother when her wish for him to be taken away is granted. Really? Labyrinth was a book? No. Labyrinth was a movie first, and they wrote a book from the movie. Ew. Right? Trick question, the end. (laughs) (laughs) Those are always worse. Uh, uh, The book is called Jim Henson's Labyrinth or something like that. A novelization of of the movie Labyrinth. That's so funny. And they both happened in 1986. I think they were released concurrently. Weird. Right? Hollywood works in a weird way. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. It was all movies we've done before. Mostly. Because we've done a bunch. Yeah. Which, you wasted. Which, I don't, well, you know. I kind of, you know, a couple of softballs. That's yeah, all right. I uh, should have not told you about the shrimp boat in Forrest Gump, and you probably would have thought I, I would have said Rudy. Right. Yeah, I would have said Rudy. I don't uh, know who Rudy is. Uh, uh, that was Sean Astin in, like, the early 90s. It was, like, the um, uh, the the fighting Irish. He was, like, the football player, and, and I never saw it. Yeah, but right. but it's, like, it's one of his big movies that he did. Uh, Samwise Gamgee. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, I didn't mention it at the top, but this is episode forty. Wow. Yeah, Aww. we've done forty episodes, um, which is which is fun. I think when I, think I was on like th- another big number, twenty or twenty one, maybe maybe twenty five or something like that. I want to say too when we did Terminator yeah. Two and uh, Interstellar, big numbers, and we always do something different. Yeah, we always fuck around when Joe's not here. Yeah, which is you know it's fun. Why not? Um, but I think it would be fun to go through and read, um, any one of those books Mm -hmm. that we mentioned in, in, uh, comparison to the, the movies that we've talked about. Yeah. The next one you can do is Jurassic Park since you've read the book now and seen the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I read, I read, uh, the Lost World, the, the, Mm -hmm. the sequel after that. But, um. Uh, I know we were kicking around the idea of like, okay, Joe, here's an idea. Let's read The Devil Wears Prada. It's only like, it's it's a short it's one short. too. It's not even 200 pages, I don't think. Yeah, and he's like, He's Justin. like, I can't read. It's like, <laughs> come on, nut up, homeschool. Um, he's like, no, dude, listen, I read he's like, really I'm slow. He's like, school on a mountain. Like, I read really slow. And I was like, be that as it may. That's not, it's not a big, a- okay, you know what, fine. Um, so that's when we kind of penciled this one in. Yeah. And Joe can read. He's a very smart boy. He went to a good college. He went to Georgia Tech. <laughs> go do, uh, go Yellow Jackets. 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 Yeah. They wear jackets. Whatever they are. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this was fun. I'm excited to do another book. I think we could do Devil Wears Prada. We could do any one of those other ones that you mentioned. I think, aren't you and Joe talking about trying to tackle a TV series? That's right. Uh, next episode, I think what we're going to do uh, for next month, since we've only did, we only did one Episode for April, which was my fault. It fully admitted. Totally like, hemmed and hawed and whatever. It's fine. It's pissed and moaned and <laughs> <laughs> but I had a good time, but I cried and I didn't like it. Um uh not that there's anything wrong with that. Like it's okay to feel sad and mad and bad and glad and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's a song our baby sings. She um, wrote it. She wrote it. She did. Um But yeah, I think I'm gonna give Joe like two episodes back to back in May. Mm-hmm. And we're going to do just a whole oh, shit. Did you enjoy your vacation? Yeah. Back to work. Back to work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a whole slew of Bob's Burgers episodes, which is a show I've never seen and Joe loves. I've seen like two episodes, so this will be fun. Yeah. I think uh, my sister really likes it too. And I think Joe mentioned that like he's not going to make us watch like the whole first season or something like because that's a hard thing to do. It's hard. To, that's a hard, tough nut to crack is TV. Um, but the... Uh, what he's told me is that each episode is independent of each other. There's okay, no like. So there's no through line. Yeah. Okay. So like he's gonna pick a handful of episodes for each. That really give the vibe. Yeah, for each uh, uh, pod that we're going to cast and um, 
talk about it. Um, so that'll be fun. So be on the lookout for that in May. We're going to do some Bob's Burgers Which episodes. Like a week from now because... Shut up. This took too long. <laughs> this hurt my heart in so many ways. And uh, for those of you who have read it and watched it, you understand. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so that's what we're going to do next. Uh, check us out on the socials, uh, at Uncultured Universe, on Instagram, TikTok, forever, how long it stays, uh, and YouTube, uh, and then just wherever you get your podcasts at, just search Uncultured Universe and you'll find us. All right, uh, we'll catch you guys later on the Flippy Flop. Bye.